Our uh, second presenter is Mr. Joe Alfuri, and he will be talking about organic motors driving the nano world. Joe, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Today I'll be introducing another field that falls under the branch of organic electronics, entitled organic motors. First, this is the graphical abstract of my presentation. I'll be introducing all of these types of organic motors you see here in this picture. And I hope to show you by the end of some of this uh, seminar that truly they are driving the nano world to life. But first, my outline. I'll be introducing the miniaturization process that brought about these molecules to birth and the characteristics and terminology of these molecules, some type of natural molecular motors and finally the greater emphasis of, the, of this seminar will be on organic motors, specifically Stoddard serotexanes and Ferenjas motors. First, the advance of technology dependent on the miniaturization process. Originally, this started by taking a product and simply shrinking it. The best illustration of this is integrated circuits, just like in your computers. If you look, for example, at computers in the early 1950s, they used to occupy large rooms to do simple operations, whereas today computers with much greater complexity can occupy simply the palm of your hand. This is thanks to the development of microprocessors, which is a component of the central processing unit of the computer that was developed in 1971. And today, this processor fits through the eye of a needle. Just to give you an idea how, how, simple, how small these components have come. However, there is a limitation to this uh, approach, simply because it, it arises from the field of optics. They cannot go beneath a field uh, uh, smaller than a field of 50 nanometers. Which is why an alternative was proposed first by Richard Feynman, known as the bottom-up approach. Why not start from the bottom up using atoms? That's what Richard uh, Feynman proposed in his address to the American Physical Society in 1959. He proposed to start by building devices from atoms. However, as chemists, we know that this is not possible, simply because atoms are very reactive. You cannot choose to put one atom on the periodic table, such as hydrogen, next to an oxygen. They do not exist in this case. However, a better alternative is to use molecules. And using molecules gave birth to supramolecular chemistry. And these are the Nobel laureates who advanced this field to the stage that it is today. Introducing Richard Feynman, who first introduced the idea of the bottom-up approach, then Gerd Binning and Henrik Rohr who introduced probe microscopes. Pedersen, Kram and Glenn introduced supramolecular chemistry and developed it. Deisenhofer, Hubert and Mitchell who introduced photosynthesis, who unraveled the mechanisms underlying photosynthesis. Boyer, Skew and Walker who unraveled mechanism of ATP synthase which is a rotary, a rotary natural motor. And finally Rudolf Marcus who introduced the mechanisms of electron transfer reactions. What is a molecular motor? Simply, a molecular motor converts electrical, chemical, and light energy into mechanical motion. Its characteristics, the type of energy input, as I explained earlier, it could be uh, electrical, light, or chemical. The motion of the components, whether rotary or linear. The operation monitoring, the possibility to repeat process. Is it cyclic or not cyclic? Can the motor keep on repeating its process? The time scale to complete cycle, meaning the frequency of the repetition of the cycle, if it is cyclic. Some examples of natural molecular motors are ATP synthase, which is a rotary molecular motor, kinesin, dynin, and myosin. The, all, these are, all, all these types are linear motors. The only difference is in the type of uh, the, sh the shape of the uh, motor heads and the, the filament on which they, uh, they uh, function. To illustrate, kinesin walks linearly on this. Uh, microtubule guiding organelles in, inside the cell. This is known as the kinesin walk. Simply by hydrolyzing ATP, it moves forward. Now, organic motors. The pioneers of this field are Stoddard, Ley, and Feringia. Stoddard is known for his rotaxane sense system, which moves, which is a simple thread with a ring around it that moves in the, both directions or could rotate around the ring, pirouette. Lay, which introduced catenane systems that took only pirouette, and this I will, uh, and I will not go into detail of these systems because uh, my colleague Dean will go into the details of these systems. 
And I'll introduce as well Ben Ferringa's motors, who has really, really interesting motors, different from these two, because these are much smaller molecules, whereas these are macrocycles, as you will see. First, introducing Stoddard. How to design a motor? There are three concepts underlying the design of a motor. Brownian motion, kinetic barriers, and breaking the statistical balance. To illustrate, for example, here you have this rotaxane, where the blue ring represents the blue ring here, and this represents the sled with two stations. In this case, it is two stations. This is only one. The two stations are equivalent. And this ring has an equal affinity to be on this station and on this station, as illustrated here in the energy diagram. However, how does it travel from one station to the other? Here is the role of Brownian motion, which allows the ring to go from one to the other simply due to the random motion of its, its particle. This is an inherent property. Because at any temperature above zero, zero Kelvin, particles have, have thermal motion, they move. And this motion can allow them to traverse this kinetic barrier to reach the other station. However, if you notice, uh, uh, 50 per, because they are equivalent, 50 per, after some time, 50% of the ring will be on, uh, on this side and the other 50 on this side. And this system cannot function as a motor because you cannot obtain any net motion because the stations are equivalent, basically. This is one, half of the system, half of the rings will, will be on one side and the other half on the other side. So this introduced kinetic barriers to, uh, to control the directionality of a motor and to have it function. This is done simply by changing the two stations and the ring having higher affinity for one than the other. Here the two stations, one is a benzidine unit, the other is a biphenol, and the ring has a higher affinity to the benzidine unit as illustrated in this energy diagram. It refers to be at this lower energy state. So simply by protonating the system, the benzidine unit is protonated, the system now, as you can see here in the difference, this raises the energy of station A to A prime, this, at this level, and now station B is much more preferable position. So the ring shuttles to the other position. And you can see here that in the difference in statistical distribution, 98% will be on this side, whereas only 2% will be on this side. And if you can go back simply by adding D5 pyridine, a base. So this is, now we have designed a shuttle that is controllable by acid-based chemistry. How do you synthesize these systems? Simply, first you could have the microcycle done, then you thread it through the pseudo-rotaxane, which is an unfinished rotaxane, then you stop it. Now it is stuck between the two bulky groups and moves forward and backward. Or the other method is simply by finishing, synthesizing, synthesizing the rotaxane, and then clipping the microcycle around it. Some applications. In 2004, Stoddard introduced the molecular elevator, which is based on the same system of the shuttle I just explained previously. You have three shuttles here, as you aligned, connected together, fused together, together by three rings, which are fused on a central platform, which is this orange side here. Now, these rings can move up and down simply as well by acid-based chemistry, and depending on the station affinity. You can see it better here in the uh, chemical structure of this elevator and uh, uh, between the, also the, the protonated and deprotonated form, it goes down when it's deprotonated and up when, uh, when it's protonated. I will not go into further detail because this will be uh, dealt in more detail by my colleague Rasha. How, and other applications as well depend, that are based on rotaxane systems, in 2005, which is one year later after the design of the elevator, Stoddard introduces the molecular muscle, which is a rotaxane unit thread with two, with two macrocycles that move forward to two stations and then backwards simply by redox chemistry. As you can see, it, it is imitating the, the skeletal muscle. This is a picture of the skeletal muscle that allows us to do this. You can see it extending as the, as, as the skeletal muscle and then contracting based on the removal and addition of electrons. This causes, when, when placed on a, when fixed on a gold surface, al allows the uh, bending and the uh, it bends the cantilever beam due to the mo forward motion of these uh, rings. Therefore, we have to, this is a design of a molecular muscle. It can cause motion, just like a human can move its hand. Right? Its hand. But the difference is that your hand moves based on natural motors. Okay, now introducing Feringia's motor. Feringia designed, this is the first type, gener first generation motor. This functions, what's the difference between this motor and the other previously discussed motors is that this motor functions based on cis to trans isomerization. Simply by eliminating with the UV light, the, this ring flips around this uh, axle and then thermal helix inversion allows it to pass uh, these two rings to pass each other and then the radiation causes cis to trans isomerization again, then thermal helix inversion again. 
So now you have achieved what's happening here simply is you have a unidirectional rotation. The motor is moving clockwise then to its own initial state again by two, by two things, uh, UV, uh, UV irradiation and thermal helix inversion. However, a better generation of motors was designed also by Ferenczo. Simply, this generation is better than the other because it has well-defined components this is a stator, it, it's, uh, it's, it fixes the motor to a surface. This is another benefit that this motor did not have. An axle and a rotor. The rotor is the unit that, uh, spins, that spins around the, uh, the stator. And an additional benefit to this system is that this system rotates 1.3 million times faster than the first generation systems. Now, as I said, the additional benefit here is that uh, it will be added on surfaces, and I will show you examples later. But first, Applications to nano vehicles. Jat introduced nano vehicles. Here you have a motor embedded in a nano vehicle that causes it to move simply by rotating, and you can see here an illustration of the motor rotating in the nano vehicle. And on surfaces, so far his motors were uh, were uh, were fixated on gold surfaces and quartz surfaces, modified quartz. Now, why is this important? Why do we care if these motors are put on surfaces or not? Simply because you cannot use them in nano technology if they are still in liquid solution. Imagine you want to use them in computers, integrated circuits. You cannot have them in liquids to function. So you could have a much wider application of these systems once you are able to fix them on, surf on surfaces and they function properly. In this case, they are fixed on gold and it resumes its function. This, another motor is also fixed on gold and it resumes its function. So this is really amazing. Another application is on liquid crystals. Here you have this is the motor and this is the LC host, liquid crystal host. When you put this motor, when you dope the, this uh, liquid crystal with this motor, you can control the entire visible spectrum simply by the rotation of the motor. The entire visible spectrum is controlled. So what, what benefit this gives us? In, my, in, in, your, in your traditional LCs, you, you use three cells, one for yellow, one for green, and one for red, and one for blue to, to obtain the entire spectrum. Here you are only using one type of liquid crystal and doped with a small quantity of a motor and you can control the entire visible spectrum. So this has great applications as well. And the same motor is also embedded on a crystal where you have a glass rod put on the crystal just to show you, to, to, to understand the force of this motor. This, this glass rod is 10,000 times much heavier than the motor. And as the motor, is, uh, as the motor rotates, it moves the glass rod as well. So you can see these motors are not only driving the nano, they are also driving the microscopic world. Because here, and here is an illustration. To conclude, this uh, seminar is proof that the bottom-up approach is a much more convenient way and can be a replacement to the top-down approach. Also, molecular motors have already found several applications as, as illustrated in Ben Ferenja's work and Stoddard's work. Yet, we are still far from the complexity of biological systems such as ATP, kinesin, and myosin. However, Nature has had a 4.5 billion year head start, and chemists from all around the world have united their efforts in order to reach the application stage a lot faster. Thank you. Uh, that's, uh, doctor, do I have a, a few minutes? I have a movie which I could not embed. If I have, I can show it to them. We'll, uh, we'll see. Thank you for the presentation. Let's see how much time we have okay. for questions. Any questions, comments? Yes, please. Uh, you said that using the motor we can control the whole spectrum. Yes. Uh, how does the motor do that? Interesting. Simply because uh, so you see you have an LC, you have a crystal host. The crystal, the liquid crystal. This is not uh, Why don't you ask me a question again? And I'll get you a little more. I don't know if you have to do Yes. This preference is simply because uh, the, the uh, macro cycle interacts with these systems by pi pi uh, interaction. And this is a much better pi donor than this one. So the, so the ring is a pi at once? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Well, it seems. Okay. In a liquid crystal, you have the perfect arrangement of crystals. Once you do, and the crystal emits color, once you go to the motor, the motor as it rotates, it's changing the orientation of the 
entire crystal lattice. And as it changes this, it's changing as well their properties. They start absorbing differently and emitting differently. And here, this is why the crystals show different colors. Because this motor is disturbing their uh, environment. How does it disturb their environment? Simply, it's not because the motor is being irradiated. It's at the stage, I wish to show you the stage. It's not because uh, of the irradiation. The, step, the motor releases energy when it goes undergoes thermal heat conversion. It's thermal because it is a releasing, it's an energy releasing process. And when it does that, it disturbs the entire crystal lattice and changes the lattice and changes its properties. So they absorb the element by different. That's all. Any other questions from the audience? Yes, please, Marwan. Uh, you talked about. Uh, Stoddard's in this example here you have what's happening is simply these are contracting like a muscle but they're not doing the exact action of the muscle their contraction causes this to bend but their contraction does not mean they are acting there. they are moving forward just like the act of No, it's just these two rings that are moving at the same time. The, only the microcycle moves from one state to the other. They move forward, they bend this. Not several molecules, only one. For, one the, microcycle. for the sake of time, we may discuss any further questions with uh, Joe okay, uh, afterwards. Let's thank you again for uh, this. I'd like to conclude this semester, this course, by thanking everyone of you for uh, the, uh, the kind of work you put in. And I, uh, I, I think, uh, or I hope, that we not only we learn how to uh, give a seminar, um, how to educate people who don't know about a certain subject, how to search literature, how to read about a certain subject, how to write about a certain subject, and most importantly, to learn 